let's get more into what I mean by pub sub plus. When we look at traditional pub sub, it's a one to one ratio by default, meaning I put a message on a queue, someone reads that message off that queue, that message is gone forever. It's up to the consumer to do something with that message. This also means that if you put many consumers on a single queue, only one of them is going to get that message. When you put a message on a queue, by default it tends to not be persistent. Depending on the technology, you can set up behaviors where you can temporarily store some of that information to disk in terms of a backup, but by default there is no persistence. When that message is on that queue, and if that queue goes down, or that instance goes down, you're expected to have a highly available setup so that if one instance goes down, you have other instances to be able to take over. However, if you only had one instance of a technology like RabbitMQ and that technology went down, you would lose anything that was put on the queue unless you had set up some sort of recovery options. Finally, when it comes to PubSub, most people refer to it as middleware. You'll sometimes hear me refer to things as smart endpoints and dumb pipes. This is a Martin Fowler principle that refers to when dealing with any type of system, if you have something like a messaging, a messaging queue, that is considered a pipe. It's the means by which information gets to point A to point B. The endpoint is where you want the smarts to be, the application, the RESTful services. This can get into a lot of nuances, but fundamentally, I feel this is a good approach because it's much easier to test and do things with an endpoint as opposed to a piece of middleware. For example, if I put all sorts of logic into my my queue for how to do things and route things, the only place that I could ever test that would be on my queuing technology. Additionally, I really can't unit test that. Getting into the plus portion, we start talking about eventing. Instead of one to one, it's one to many. When an event goes on to a topic, any consumer on that topic will get a copy of that event. So it behaves like a broadcast. That event, once it hits the message bus or the topic, is also expected to be persistent. Now, how long it's persistent for is going to depend on what your actual data storage technology is. For example, there's no reason that you can't use Kafka as essentially a messaging bus and nothing more. You don't worry about persistence. But from a fundamental eventing perspective, the idea is that it's persistent and that by being persistent, you now have it as an unmodified source of truth. When we say source of truth, consider that if I were to take some data and put it in a database, I have to transform that data in some meaningful way. I have to break it into a series of records, the table structure, and so on. When we're talking eventing, the idea is that you have the raw data and you store that raw data in its raw form for some period of time. That way, when it comes to trying to get information out of the system, that data is always going to look the same. You're not looking at a lens through, well, I had to transform this and put it in a database. You're looking at the raw data. Also, when looking at the behavior between a pub sub and eventing, consider that once something is consumed off of a queue in a pub sub architecture, it's gone forever. When talking about an eventing architecture, there's really two fundamental ways to work with it when you start up for the first time. When you connect to a, to a topic and that topic already has information in it, you can decide that, hey, if I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning of time, or you can say I only care about events that happen after I've started my consumption. 